Okay, this is question two of the 2020 level three physics exams. Yes. Uh, right, what we got? Um, the circuit below shows a simplified version of the car's ignition system. The ignition core is comprised of an inductor of five Henrys, 22, her, uh, 22 ohms. The inductor can be modeled by a five Henry ideal conductor and a 22 ohm resistor. Uh, let's show on the diagram, you've got a 12 volt battery, it's connected to a switch, an inductor and resistor in series. Um, spark plug is placed in parallel with the inductor and resistor. Cool. State the voltages across the inductor and resistor the instant this after the switch is closed. Um, so we go VL is going to be equal to 12 volts because it'll match the supply. Um, and VR is going to be equal to 0 volts. Um, because when you flip the switch, I mean this is the positive side of the battery, so the current, conventional current will flow this way. Um, initially the inductor, even if it was these were swap positions, um, the inductor, you get a, what do you call it, a change in flux which induces a voltage. I mean, what's the voltage across the inductor? Um, what do we got? Uh, v uh, equals negative, what is it, delta, oh that should be an L here somewhere, L delta I over delta T. Um, so the EMF that you can get, initially when you flip the switch, this rate of change of current over time is a cent, well, is it infinite? Oh, I don't even know, it's zero to something, which I suppose is infinite. Um, so you get, the voltage will just match the supply and that comes back to Kirchhoff's law. You can't, the sum of the voltages in a circuit on a closed loop will equal to zero. Um, so, and because this has five volts or 12 volts across it, this will add to zero. Um, I think that's all I need to do. Cool. Explain why the current takes time to reach the maximum once the switch is closed. I mean, this is just a ye old. Um, the inductor has a change in current across it. Um, has a, well, I'll, I'll just pause it and then I'll explain it afterwards. Right, so I see when the switch is closed, there's a large change in current. Um, this change in current, I'll just put delta I, reduces, uh, induces a voltage across the inductor. Be careful, because you've got to say induces a voltage. Um, a lot of kids just say it induces a current that opposes the current that it supplies, and that skips a few steps um, of understanding. Um, and then I've got the formula. This E is just stands for EMF, which is just fancy voltage. Well, it's not even fancy voltage. It's what they used to call voltage way back in the day. They used to call it the electromotive force before they realized it's not really a force, but kind of is, but I don't even know. Um, and it equals negative the inductance times the change of current over change in time, or it's not a force. Um, which opposes the supply. As a current, uh, as a circuit reaches steady state, the change in current, that should be a sharper triangle, um, decreases, decreasing the voltage across the inductor. This is why it takes time to reach max current. Um, cool, right, calculate the circuit, calculate the circuit current one time constant after the switch is closed. Right, so after one time constant, the voltage across the inductor is going to drop by how much is it going to drop by? Um, 63%. Um, which means okay, let's just do it another way. Um, how am I going to do this the easiest way possible? Let's just find out what the total current would be without the with it like. What do you call it? After, like the max current. So I max, we'll find that out because I'm going to work backwards. I max is equal to V max um, over R because this has no resistance after, like it's been, this should just be I steady state equals V over R. Um, so that is going to be equal to 12 over 22. 22, and I'm going to do that in my calculator real quick. 5 over 22 equals 0 0.54. Yeah, we're trying to find the current, aren't we? You totally are. Current 5454. Is that 5454 repeating for a very long time? Um, 54 amps. Um, so, initially, when we flip the switch, it's gonna, this is gonna have, what is it? It's gonna be max. And then it's going to decrease by 63%. Hold up. I just thought I'd better sketch this first. This is what's going to happen. This would be, it starts at zero, because when you flip the switch, no current can flow. 
and then it peaks out at five time constants over here somewhere, and it looks like this. There we go, you can even see that. Five time constants where it peaks out. Um, one time constant, so just tau, it increases by 63%. Um, so we're just gonna times this by 0 0.63, and that'll give us the current at that point in time. So times 0.63 equals 0 0.343. Um, that should be 344. Here's my calculator, I just did it then. Um, so it's gonna be 344 four amps. So I is equal to 0 0.3. Four, four amps. I better check the answers. What they get? Zero point three four five. I mean, how did they do it? Ah, oh, it's because it's not sixty three. Ah, oh, that's fine. What happens if I do it? I'm just gonna pause and do it with. Exp I totally just did it with exponentials, and it gives me zero point three four four seven. So yeah, it should actually be zero point. 3445 um, amps, not 344. See, this is what happens when they don't, this isn't really taught. So this whole, I'll just quickly chuck the formula up. I, this is not I max, this is just I you get after a certain amount of time is equal to I max. Um, because it's increasing, it's one minus e to the power of negative, uh, what is it, t over tau. Um, yeah, t over tau. Um, there you go. So this this is the time elapsed over the by, divided by the time constant. So if the time elapsed is just one time constant, it just ends up being one. Um, so one time constant is said to occur. So it's just one minus e to the negative one, which is whatever that is. Um, that's a general formula for it, and you can just like yeah. So it's t divided by the time constant. Um, surprising that they expect you to know that. Anyway, um, spark plugs need very high voltage. No, it was it need a very high voltage of 20,000 volts to produce a spark. Explain why a spark is produced when the switch is open but not when it is closed. Oosh. Um, open, hold on, wait. Ah, okay. But, and the switch is open but not when it's closed. So initially, obviously, when it's open and nothing's in this. That's a bit of a weird statement because to begin with the switch is open but there's no voltage across you know, the, the inductor hasn't charged up or hasn't hasn't got a magnetic field. So initially there'd be no no spark. So let's assume that they've closed the switch, current's been flowing, yada yada yada, and then they've opened the switch and then a spark is produced. And you ask yourself, well how does that even happen? Well the way that happens is when you open the switch, you get a circuit with essentially this is a, a massive resistor. Um, anything will conduct electricity if the voltage is high enough. Um, it's called dielectric breakdown. Uh, literally any substance will conduct electricity if you have a high enough voltage. I mean, some voltages are probably unrealistic to attain. Um, the only thing that doesn't is a vacuum, but I mean, vacuums are a bit weird and the fact that you can't have electrons flow across them. So, I mean, yeah, let's just not get into that. So this ends up being a really, really high resistance. Um, you have, what do we got? Um, where is that formula? Just let me for a chicken. Yeah, it's EMF is equal to negative uh, delta flux, change of flux over change in time. Um, I suppose this formula sort of covers it as well. So you have a rapid, rapid change in current. Um, I mean, obviously it's the same as the supply. Um, and then you have, so the inductor's magnetic field collapses and the voltage is essentially unlimited for, mm, this, the general, well no, not statement, but the general go-to is that this doesn't obey Kirchhoff's law because it's no longer a closed loop. That's a lie. This is actually an inductor coupled with a capacitor. So you can think of this as a capacitor um, with any little bit of like tiny weak plates. So the voltage across the, oh uh, wait, yeah, with tiny, tiny weak plates, the voltage stored at a capacitor. Um, ooh, okay, this is getting a little bit too in depth for this question. Um, I'll save that for a scholarship question sometime. Anyway, um, I mean, you can ask in the comments if you want. Explain why a spark is produced. So I'll just write out the full answer and then um, discuss it.
Right, so I said when the switch is opened, there is a large change in current. I've got delta I. Also, the air gap can be modeled as a very large resistor. Thus, the time constant for the circuit is very small. When I just put the formula T equals L over R. These two vectors factors induce a very large voltage. Um, I'll just put the formula that's induced um, across the inductor with when which is there should be which is which is high enough for the spark to jump the gap and i i mean i put this equals in the answer schedule but i'm going to talk about it no longer a closed loop so kirchhoff's law doesn't apply that's not true um this is a closed loop kirchhoff law is just a summa or it's a statement that energy is always conserved in a circuit which is always the case you can't like get rid of it so this essentially is a capacitor um, we can model this as a ca capacitor and what happens is you get a build up of charge on this capacitor so the magnetic field collapses you get a you do get like a a rapid like current which is like uh so there is a large voltage across um across this inductor when it collapses because of the time constant which then you know shunts a whole lot of current which then puts a whole lot of charges on um the two, I don't know, plates or whatever you call it. But you can look at it energy-wise. If you look at energy-wise, you've got energy installed in the inductor, the energy stored in the capacitor. Approximately put the two together because you're going to have some energy losses. And the voltage across the uh, capacitor, because, you know, uh, this is the voltage across, uh, the energy stored in the capacitor is half CV squared. The voltage, you know, L, I squared is proportional to CV squared. So the voltage is equal to square. Well, this is really be like proportional. It's not actually equal to, because you're going to lose energy. Um, square root L I squared over C. Now, the, the thing is, C is going to be tiny. The, the, the area of the plates is going to be so small that you're going to end up with a really, really, really small C, which means your voltage across the, uh, essentially this can be thought of as a capacitor, is going to be huge. Um, and yeah, that, that, that sort of explains it. I mean, uh, you can talk about Kirchhoff law, conservation of energy, but... I mean, I've always been a bit uneasy with that one there, um, especially when this should lead on to scholarship physics, where conservation of energy is a statement of, well, that's what Kirchhoff law implies. And the other part of it is conservation of charge, where you can't really, like, the, the current should all add to each other. Um, so, yeah.